There you go. Thank you. Now, this is Wes from Thinking Critical. For those who um, don't know, he's a YouTuber who does a bunch of comic books, especially comic books specifically, anything comic related. Um, talking about what's playing comics, what's good about comics, about this and a third. If you care about that, like Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, or IDW, this is something you might want to watch or hear. If you don't care about that, that's perfectly fine. You can still pay attention to the artwork I'm doing and all the great stuff. So it says here, the stupidest Marvel comic Spider-Man idea ever. So it seems like Marvel still don't know how to use Spider-Man correctly. They don't like this dude or what case may be. I don't know what the issue is. Well, we all know what the issue is. But um, it just seems like there's just no respect for this individual. I just don't know. So with that said, let's go. I feel bad for Stanley, so let's go. Most comic book fans know that Amazing Spider-Man is the flagship for Marvel Comics, the biggest book, the most important book that they put out every single month. But you wouldn't know it by the way that Marvel Comics and Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe are treating the book as of late. It's just been a complete mess under Zeb Wells. The beginning stories with Tombstone perfectly fine everything else has been crap you think well it can only get better after gang war it can only get better after this or that and every time zeb wells finds a way to subvert my expectations and there was something that came out on social media this week and i looked at it and i was like there's no way that can be true because that is the stupidest idea not only in the history of spider-man well maybe that's the second stupidest idea because you do have one more day but it does look stupider than anything that came out in during one more day but this is one of the stupidest ideas in the history of marvel comics period mm -hmm. one of the dumbest ideas ever marvel for some reason have become a company instead of being the house of ideas they go let's take a concept that would make a provocative or interesting variant cover and let's actually make that who the character is and that's basically what's happening with Peter Parker Spider-Man because he's going to become an abomination at this point. Peter Parker will become a variation of the Green Goblin in Marvel Comics' all-new Easy Bean Green arc, which begins with Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man number 50 from writers of Wells and artists Ed McGinnis and Todd Knock. But the why? The recently released Ed McGinnis' cover for July's Amazing Spider-Man 53 with the first appearance. I'm not going to lie. As much as this is a dumb idea, um, I'm not going to take it seriously. I'm gonna take it to a point where it's just just an art variant. It's just a spar a, a variant Spider Man. That that's all I'm seeing. I'm not gonna see it as like a anything like canon or say anything serious to take too serious. It's just an art variant cover. It's just an art variant Spider Man that you shouldn't take nothing seriously. It'll die off probably. Prince of the Spider Goblin. I am beyond gobbled out. I actually didn't think they could come up with a dumber idea than the Gold Goblin, but they truly did outdo themselves. The it was Spider probably Goblin. trying to do what Batman, what they did with the the Batman who laughs, so that they combined the Joker and the Batman as one. So they're trying to do that same thing. I don't know if that's how the story goes, but based on what I'm seeing, it looks like they're just smashing both villain and hero as one and making something much more of a of abomination than it should. Um, I think that's what they're trying to do. That's what it sounds like to me. So it is what it is. Goblin with a Green Goblin themed or Amazing Spider-Man themed Green Goblin character. Oh my goodness. It just looks so stupid. I feel bad. I feel terrible for Ed McGinnis, one of the greatest artists of his generation, one of the best artists still remaining that works regularly at Marvel Comics, does interiors, not all the time, but he actually does interior work, obviously does a lot of covers, and he has to do the Spider Goblin just... They are clearly out of ideas. There's nothing left for them to do with the character. Kill Peter Parker off. Just murder him in some fantastical way. Make it meaningful and move on from the character if you literally cannot do anything more interesting than turning him into the fucking Green Goblin. It's just, it, it's so frustrating be, being a Marvel fan. You know, there are series out there that maybe aren't that important. And even as a comic book reviewer, I can just, you know, kind of skip them. A uh, size freighter's flash. I pay it no mind. I don't yeah. know what's happened for the last four months because the the series is literally so unimportant and so stupid that I just don't pay attention to it. I cannot treat Amazing Spider-Man. I can't treat Batman. I can't even treat Detective Comics like that. And I'm just being inundated with these terrible fucking ideas on all the mainline, frontline, flagship fucking characters of both companies. 
and it's uh my goodness it's, <laughs> it's so frustrating and there's gonna be all these stupid youtubers out there be like oh this is spec value we might see the spider goblin in a cartoon or a movie one day he's like who gives a flying fuck like God, you gotta stop supporting this stuff it, it, <laughs> there's no spec value to you there's no spec value to the spider goblin because there's no future for the character because it's not a character it's a caricature it's a stupid idea it's a variant cover gone wrong it's the fucking garbage bale kids in 2024 is exactly what shit like the spider goblin is and uh as if if you haven't noticed i'm a little bit frustrated with the situation yeah i understand they continuously come up with dumb yeah i understand i just, I, I know where he's coming from it's coming to this point where these idiots don't know what to do with these these legacy characters at all because the previous people who created them or knew how to use them is gone. So these new writers or these uh, disgruntled writers are writing these type of stories where the character is just not the character anymore. It's just someone. It's just a punching bag or just a experiment piece or a vehicle to push or uh, destroy in its own self. It's weird. Hi, are you listening to it again? Or listening to what? It's a little tricky to draw, but I'm getting used to it. It's it's weird. It's very, very strange. What the hell? Fucking ideas can Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe come up with together? It feels like they're trying to break a record at this point. Her Marvel, Peter Parker carries the weight of Norman Osborn sins and takes to the skies as the Spider Goblin. Queen Goblin imbued a spear with the sins of Norman Osborn, the metaphysical essence of his murderous dark side, and gave it to Kraven, who stabbed Spider-Man with it, infusing him with Osborn's sins and bringing out Peter's dark side. Spider-Man eventually became free of the effects, but with the reappearance of Goblin Queen, but with the reappearance of Queen Goblin and the spear in Amazing Spider-Man 47, uh, it remains to be seen if this bears any implication sure for how Peter will soon become the Spider Goblin. It's exactly how Peter is going to become the Spider the, Goblin. The reactions you get oh, coming God. on when YouTube. I saw this week and I, I saw the Goblin Queen, Queen Goblin again. And right at that moment, I was like, oh, I forgot how goblin out I was. There's so many variations of this stupid character. And I'd actually mind dumped. I'd head yeah, out here on, fucking on the stupid spear and all the sins of Norman Osborn and the spear that Craven stabbed Peter Parker with. I was hoping it would never be revisited again. And for some reason, we're going to go out and revisit the dumbest shit that anyone's come up with with Spider-Man over the last five years. Just just terrible ideas. You know, in this week's, or last week's, I guess now, Amazing Spider-Man issue fucking looks great. Million bucks, Todd Knock on there, refreshing change from John Romita Jr. It looks so great. And as you read it, you're just like, huh. All this stuff that happened two years ago that no one cares about, why are we revisiting it now? Because they're going to break out the spider goblin, the big gun. Because they ran out of ideas. That's ultimately what they did. They ran out of ideas. That's all they did. They ran out of ideas. These people, they're really Jeez. searching. Maybe to, they just want to sell very covers at this point. Because, okay, it's right. And uh, it was a very frustrating read this week. It was frustrating to see... Todd Knock, another fantastic artist at Marvel Comics. They don't have that many being wasted on such a stupid story. And now to realize that it's only going to get dumber and dumber and dumber as Zeb Wells continues on aimlessly on fucking Amazing Spider-Man and gets pantsed by Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cicchetto and everyone else associated with Ultimate Spider-Man, which is quickly becoming the Spider-Man book of choice. I think that book is going to outsell Amazing Spider-Man for the next two or three years, there's no way Zeb Wells has any staying power at this point. It's actually, you don't ever see this. Amazing Spider-Man, if you look at the sales rankings that are available from Comics Hub this past month in March, it was actually outside of the top five. That never happens to Batman, and it certainly never happens to Amazing Spider-Man. But people are getting fed up with this shit, getting fed up with Zeb Wells' lame-ass stupid take on, on Spider-Man that really is nothing that anyone that's ever been a fan of the character ever wanted to see, and it's not even interesting. That's the worst part. It's fucking boring. It's tedious. It's lame. <sighs> and it's I certainly know. anything in the world but fun to read. It's a fucking chore at this point. 
and it's only going to get worse as we get up to it ain't easy being green fellas because Peter Parker is going to become Norman Osborn. Osborn, the original Green Goblin, changed after the Sin Eater purged Norman's metaphysical dark side. Norman has attempted to make amends by employing Peter Parker at Oscorp and allying himself with Spider-Man as Gold Goblin. Ryder Wells has previously teased Osborn's return to villainy as the Green Goblin with the upcoming Easy Being Green and Amazing Spider-Man 50 potentially being where it happens. Well, I guess we know that it, it's going to happen, or maybe they're just going to combine... We're going to have Peter Osborne or Norman Parker as the stupid spider goblin. They're going to become one entity or something stupid like that that no one ever wanted to read. And they are taking a lot of this stuff with the Sin Eater and then the, the sins of Norman Osborne uh, being taken away from him. They're all coming out of that Nick Spencer Spider-Man run, which was actually good, shockingly good, after all the damage that Nick Spencer did to his reputation. Beanbag. With, uh, Secret I think the best thing that that's happening stuff, to the MCU Nazi. is Deadpool and Wolverine. I don't... Beanbag. Wait, what Goblin Spider-Man? Yeah, so... What... What... Wes here is talking... We're talking about the comic books. We're not talking about the, the movies. We're, he's talking about the He's talking about the comic books itself. He's not talking about the, the movies. Um... Uh, He's not talking about the MCU at all. Um, the MCU always refers to that of the movies, but uh, uh, he's talking about this variant of uh, comic book of Spider-Man and the Green Goblin combined as one. It's not something that people want. It's not people who ask for. It seems like they don't know what to do with Spider-Man at all. And I think Wes Bean is right. Bag. If you're going to, I'm excited about that movie. Yeah, I I understand why most people will be excited for it, but uh, I I'm pretty sure it won't be a bad movie. But I'm pretty Being sure bad. it's not going to fix the problems. That's, that's not good. That's that's not um plaguing the MCU. The MCU MCU needs a major reboot. It needs a major rework. It needs to stop pandering to minorities and women so fast. It needs to fix itself. It needs to fresh out their characters that have problems, that have weaknesses, that have um, uh, struggle. And this is mainly towards the females, per se. Beanbag. Whoever came up with that idea should be fired. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they should be. You should see the variant cover. It looks terrible. But, like, like the MCU needs to be fixed. It like now nothing's wrong with the actors. They're just doing their job. It's not the actors. It's not even the females. It's the writers. That's the problem. And this DEI nonsense. That's what's causing these things to be ass. Till they fix that, then everything will be fine. You can write an awesome female uh, MCU um, character. Just don't make her into a girl boss who can do everything. She's super smart. She's very. She has masculine male traits for some odd reason. She's stoic for some odd reason, and then um, she can do no wrong, and everything she does is perfect, and she has no weaknesses whatsoever, and she's pretty much a Mary Sue by default. And you know, what I'm saying it's just it's a it's 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 a trope that's not only been beaten to death, but it's a trope that's not relatable to anyone, whether you're a male, female, or anything in between. And that's the problem with the MCU. It it panders too much, and Disney tries its damnedest to not change its ways. But you know, it is what it is. Disney did a better job at diversity when they was not forced to do diversity. That's the uh, that's the most awkward and ironic thing about disney disney 20 plus years ago or 15 plus years ago did better when they didn't have to be forced dei stuff they did a better job making diverse movies on diverse characters and minorities when they was not forced to do it they did mulan they did the princess and the frog they did um what was another one um well, I guess you can say the Pixar movies with the Up. They did great with uh, Coco. They did great with um... Beanbag. Yup. Well, I mean, say this is not technically Pixar, but this is 
Disney animation, those are two different things. A lot of people think Pixar and Disney animation are two different things. No, Pixar is Disney's sister company that they have or they required. Pixar is kind of their own thing, but they're under the, the thumb of Disney, so they don't really make anything else other for Disney. So, uh, Zootopia did fine, even though it's not technically a bi diverse group. It was more of messaging, and they did a better job messaging in that movie than they did in Lost World. The only thing it was pushing in Lost World is that you need to accept your orientational son. That's it. Oh, and stop being a masculine man or something like that, because women like non-masculine men, because that, that really works out for them and men and... and Anyway, the point is is that Disney did a shit job with the whole changes and following this diversity. Ultimately, I, I'm not even mad at Disney at this point. I, it's What's happening here, Disney and all these companies through all this DEI, ESG nonsense, bridge, whatever you want to f refer to it as, they're all symptoms of the same problem coming from one particular company or two of them is BlackRock, Vanguard, and Larry Fink. These are the three things that needs to be either removed completely or totally reworked, right? Once you remove these Being three bag. things out of the way, things will Treasure work Treasure Planet will forever be my favorite. They did, they, see, the thing with Treasure Planet is that what they could have did with Treasure Planet was bring it back to the forefront, but, but it's best they don't bring it back to the forefront of like a live action because what's going to happen is they're going to push a bunch of messaging that was not in there actually quite frank they don't even need to put messaging in that movie what they really need to do is just redo the whole movie all over again live action from word to word because honestly the movie had a great message about uh being uh lacking purpose uh having a f strong father figure in your life um being being open to the idea of change and all these other things it, it it had a lot of messaging that was strong for boys and girls alike and even people of certain orientation and minority whatever the fuck you would identify are you are you from it was a great movie because it had a messaging that shows that you can be yourself and you don't have to sacrifice it to get to where you need to be and if you have a great guardian caretaker or parent especially a father in your life you you will do just fine you know what i'm saying because i ain't gonna talk about the single mom because the single mom was already presented in that movie as a hard-working mom same thing like like i kind of look at the way i look at treasure plan is how i look at iron giant it's really weird I look at Iron Giant as that as um, Treasure Planet. If you really stop and think about it, they're almost not the same movie, but they have the same type of messaging in some form. It's very, very similar when you stop and think about it. So. Hmm. Cap, he comes back, redeems himself on Amazing Spider-Man, and basically he's almost at the finish line. He's about to retcon one more day. Peter Parker's got the freaking engagement ring in his pocket. He's getting ready to ask Mary Jane the question. Obviously, he gets interrupted, but he was going to get back to it eventually. So, Zeb Wells, the fucking genius. They are kind of similar. Very similar. They're similar in their ways, but uh, drastically different at the same time. They're real fucking brain trust there. They go back and they're like, what, what was it about Nick Spencer's run that people were liking? Well, I think it was the Sin Eater. I think it was Norman Osborn. Trust me, once they get their hands on Treasure Planet and ever doubt, ever even think of making a live action movie, they will fuck it all up. I'm not even gonna play this game. They will destroy the entire Treasure Planet live action if they decide to do it. If there is one in the works, they will destroy it. They will destroy the messaging in that. They will destroy the overall tone of that. They will not get it. They will push something that was never in there in the first place from the original and then try to make you force Bean you to bag. take it. I know they would. They'll destroy it. They'll The casting will be off. The casting... Oh, they might even gender swap the, the original character. 
Which is funny because if you stop and think about it, I know a lot of people on the LGBT uh, side really enjoy that movie. A lot of people on that side of the aisle like that movie for what it is. So if they ever try to change the character for those very reasons, they already destroyed the movie before it even began. It's dead on arrival. Because I know a bunch of LGBT uh, members who watch that movie, seen that movie, and enjoy that movie for what it is, and that's it. Nope. I'm telling you, once Disney says, hmm, we're going to do it, they're going to ruin it. The best thing for Disney to ever do is never touch their back catalog. What they should do is always make something new. So at least when things go left, you they can virtue signal and they can also pander and also make the audience feel like shit for not taking their new stories. They can do that. But when you take the old stories and then expect people to just accept it for what it is, you're going to have a fucking problem. Seeing sins being taken away from them, going on to Peter Parker. It had nothing to do with the fact that they were going to get the marriage back together and get Peter and MJ back together. And he was about to pop the question again. We're back, basically going to be able to get back to where Peter Parker and MJ should have been the whole time. No, let's go back and borrow all the shit that nobody cared about. That was all on the peripheral of all the stuff that people were invested in. And the reason that Amazing Spider-Man was a great book, people were loving it, and they were coming back for more and more every single month. Yeah, let's skip all the stuff that people wanted to read and just do Bean more bag. misery porn with Peter Parker. I mean, aren't they making another Spider movie of Moana or live action? Yes, they are. Um, at first, uh, if I remember right, we did this video. We did the video on that. We did the video on uh, Clownfish talking about that very thing about the Moana thing, and it came to be that it was kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think this movie's going to do well. Well, because it hasn't been, I don't think it has, I think it's been, has it been 10 years? When did Moana come out? Guys, it's me. When, what, what, what year did Moana come out? Beanbag. Uh, it's been a while. Has it been 10 years already? It doesn't feel like it has. Goblin. One of Marvel's most dangerous couples is finally together again after months of separation by hell itself, with the benefactor having her sights set on restarting an old war against Peter Parker. Beanbag. In the recently released Amazing Spider-Man 2016. Ben Riley and 2016? It hasn't been 10 years then. Well, not yet. In two years it will be. I'm not gonna lie. But like, Raya Jesus Christ. Samurai. 2016 doesn't feel like 10 years it feels like kind of like five holy shit business with the queen goblin has only just begun my concept of time has been warped ever chasm. since these movies like ever since the dei and esg you're more vigilant on them more so it feels like you're always near these characters these these movies yeah yeah it was in 2016 jesus christ mm -hmm. And Hallow's Eve, um, like I said, I within that. that amazing Spider-Man 47, there are so many returns that you forgot about that you hope Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe and everybody associated with, with oh, Amazing Spider-Man are just going to forget. I do understand that people are excited for the Deadpool movie and Wolverine. I am kind of too, but given Disney's track record, it just doesn't put a good taste in my mouth. Um, I know for a fact that this movie is not going to fix the MCU. I don't think so. If anything, they're going to make fun of the majority of the, the choices they made within the MCU multiverse um, saga. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen here. I don't think, I honestly don't think that M uh, Deadpool is going to be running around trying to fix the problems of the MCU and where B Bob Iger and uh, Josh, we uh, what is jo uh, uh, what is his name? Josh Whedon, not Josh Whedon. The other, uh, the, the the director of Marvel. I'm pretty sure they're not going to fix the problems. The only thing that's going to happen is probably introduce some new characters, probably, and then also bring in the X Men completely into the MCU completely from this point on, and then it's gonna bring Hugh Jackman's uh, Wolverine Wolverine variant in there. Also, might even bring his replacement at the same exact time in this movie. I'm pretty sure 
because Hugh Jackman's old now, and I'm pretty sure you can't be doing Wolverine forever. It'll be kind of a pain in the ass, I'm pretty sure. But then again, you never really know. Because, like, look at Keanu Reeves. I think he's in his 60s, and he still looks like a, like he's in his, like, 40s or late 30s. So, like, you know, it is what it is. Early 40s or so. But, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to think of the Deadpool movie. It might look entertaining for most, and I understand that. I get it. But I'm looking at it in the sense of how Disney, Disney is constructed and their track record. I'm not looking at Deadpool as, like, the Merc with the Mouth type stuff. I'm not looking at Wolverine. I'm looking at them writers, and I'm looking at Bob Iger and the director of Marvel. I don't trust any of them. Not the actors, the directors and writers. I don't trust them because they can't, they can't write out of a paper bag half the time. And they are very... Um, uh, what's the right word? Um disgruntled people they don't know how to take criticism at all not in the slightest so or be as close to the comics as possible seems to be so i don't trust them and that's just my take on that but you know maybe they might pull something out of the uh, out of their booty cheeks and actually surprise and fix the mcu maybe i don't think that's the i don't think that's the goal I think that goal is going to happen in Secret World Wars and just restart the whole MCU from that point. Because <laughs> they said they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. So if, if they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. back to play Iron Man again, which they, I think they pretty much confirmed it yesterday when we watched it, that tells me that the, the Deadpool movie is not focusing on fixing the problems or making fun of. A lot like what they did in Avengers Endgame where they went back in time and then took all the uh, the stones and stuff. I don't think they're going to do the same thing similar to what they'll do in Deadpool. I think it's just going to be a bunch of jokes, laughs. They're going to run through a bunch of like different world variants and something like that and just make fun of everyone. And then probably find the same replacement for Wolverine for the MCU somewhere down the line. Maybe. Or maybe that will happen in Secret Wars. Not sure. And I think, if possible, I don't think Hugh Jackman's um, cameo as Wolverine is going to be the only cameo there other than the X-Men. I think they're also going to probably bring Peter Parker in there, uh, probably either between Andrew Garfield or Tom uh, Tobey Maguire might be in it. I, I have this feeling that they're going to be in it in some form. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that's a confirmation that's going to happen, but I just have that feeling because what Disney's going to try to do is try to hold off as best as they can to get the Secret Wars as fast as possible. So <clears throat> the best way to in, to make enough of a profit from this movie is have Ryan Reynolds, have Hugh Jackman, throw Tobey Maguire in there for nostalgic reasons, just for shits and giggles, just to hold off them Spider-Man fans, because I think they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do with Peter Parker, since the whole change and everything with the... John Jonathan Majors and the whole nine, so I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But that's just my take on that. That's what I'm assuming. That's my spec. Um, my uh, me speculating on. But you know, you never know. But I don't think it's going to be made to fix anything. I think it's going to do quite the opposite. I think it's just trying to hold you over till they get to Secret Wars. I think Secret Wars is where it's going to fix. And if this movie bombs, I'm pretty sure next next movie will be Secret War, Wars and down that line, maybe. I'm not sure. Or the Secret Wars, you won't hear another movie from Marvel till like a new year from now. Oh, it's so bad. There's like this giant guy. He looks like Jason. And I didn't even get it at first. Apparently that was Hollow's Eve and she takes the mask off when she sees Chasm. I thought maybe that was Chasm and she took the mask off of him. I wasn't even really sure. It's not really apparent, even though the art is very good. The script itself sucks, so it was hard to make it apparent what was happening. Later, she puts on another mask and turns into a wolf. I don't even remember that being part of the character. And Chasm just, like, shows up. He wants to make out with her. I was like, why do you keep doing this to my boy here? You know, he's the clone of freaking Peter Parker. Ben Riley deserves more. He looks like Venom. He's basically D-list Venom at this point. They even gave him all of Venom's original like motivations and all that kind of stuff and he's just venom light at this point 
Why don't you just put Dylan Mulvaney on a fucking commercial for Chasm and Hollow Z? I really think the character is even worse than what oh, Zeb Wells does. It's just, uh, Damn. If, you, if you haven't noticed, I'm very frustrated with, with uh, Amazing Spider Man. I'm very frustrated with Marvel. I'm very frustrated with Zeb Wells. I'm very frustrated with Nick Lowe. I'm very frustrated with great artists like Ed McGinnis and Todd Knock being wasted on stories that nobody has an interest in because perhaps. After the issue comes up, people will be selling the stupid first appearance of the Spider Goblin for $52 on eBay. The problem is nobody will be reading the fucking book. Because he is so tired of this. A story that nobody <laughs> this is the, ever actually This is the read. most I hear him curse, so he, you know he's tired of this shit. That's how I feel about it. I'm not holding anything back. Yeah, I can, I can tell. Just, uh, I'm a little bit pissed off, but that's fine. Do like more coverage. <laughs> this is the most Spider-Man I ever hear him curse. Marvel comics and DC comics and all the sins. The entire comic book industry that's pissing me off more and more by the day. You do need to go to the Thinking Critical Patreon. Well, we do have lots of fun stuff, and I'm probably not going to be quite as frustrated as I am right here, right now. But we'll definitely be talking about this uh, with Doc, with Aaron Sparrow, <sighs> because this is an idea so spectacularly stupid i've got to discuss it with everybody because i want to have as many opinions on this and why it's it's the dumbest idea perhaps in the history of marvel comics period if you haven't checked out thinking critical patreon there's a link in the video description all right so that was doc i mean doc that was west on the whole spider-man debacle he went on a whole rant i feel bad for him I know how he feels going on a rant. So it is what it is. So like, should I share, follow, and comment, give him a follow, and all that great stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Hmm. All right. Now, it's here at Clownfish TV. It says here. Uh, okay, I'll look at it in a second. Uh, Disney gives away Disney Plus again. Star Wars isn't profitable. Oh. <sighs> Okay, I will do your, um, I'll look at it and give you what I need, what you need after this video. It's only 16 minutes from now. Hopefully you can hold off by then. You can kind of jump over here. Just to let you know, all right, I'm on Facebook again. Um, so yeah, let's see what's going on here with Disney+. Plus. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about Disney inking another deal with Verizon for free Disney streaming bundles. Yes. Right? And it goes for six months, guys, which happens to take you to the end of the fiscal year and into the beginning of next year. So they'll, they'll have these numbers counted towards the promises they made about profitability and streaming numbers by the end of the year. Yeah, so this is this is some more uh, hokey pokey. We're, and speaking of which, we're also going to talk about Star Wars Forbes coming out and backing up uh, speculation on our part from, God, a couple weeks ago when they dropped that white paper saying that they made three times back what they spent. Turns out, no, they, they really didn't. And this was all about just, I think, uh, bullshitting the normies who have Disney stock, what do they call them? The, the consumer investors, uh, the retail investors, the pixie, dusters. the pixie dusters, right? The people that just buy Disney stock and they have no other stock. And they were the ones who kept the board intact. This is about bullshitting them. But now they're going to have to pay the piper. Oh, and then there's layoffs at Marvel too. So oh, there's layoffs at Marvel. We got all kinds of stuff. It's, it's a summary of Disney. It's a, it's a cornucopia of Terrible Disney news. A cornucopia of crap. There you go. Is that what we're going to talk about? Crapacopia. Crapacopia. Disney. Oh, that's, that should be the name of their new theme park. Disney's. Crapacopia. Crapacopia Adventure. The Crap Adventure. All right. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, it's coming from the Hollywood Reporter. Ver, uh, Verizon Inc.'s deal for free Disney streaming bundle for some unlimited customers. Right. So basically what it is is... Verizon already offers the Disney streaming bundle for ten dollars a yeah. month, which is five dollars cheaper than it is, you know, Disney already. So now they're going to give new and current Verizon customers six free months of the bundle when they switch to the plans, and after that, it'll cost you ten dollars per month again. So you switch, you get the free six months, and then you're back to pay the ten dollars they're already paying them uh, right after the six months is up when it would give Disney the numbers. Yeah, so they did this at the beginning when they launched 
Disney Plus too to get a boost. They yeah, they mentioned that. If you go down here, it's interesting. They said that right here. Go back up a little bit. Verizon has been particularly aggressive about its plans to bundle streaming services in a bid to lock in customers and has partnered with Disney before. Most notably, Verizon was a launch partner for Disney Plus, giving many of its customers one free year of the service and helping Disney Plus gain substantial market share early on. Yeah. So they're like, look, they're coming up against the deadline. They got to make this thing profitable or at least look profitable or look like it has a future. And we had, you know, the video we did yesterday, they talked about how they're going to add basically linear television, linear cable to Disney Plus. They're going to have streaming channels, mm -hmm. you know, and that's probably another it's gonna be Tubi. It's going to be Tubi. Basically, it's going to be Mickey. They should put a little eye on the end of it there. But um, yeah, they're they're doing everything they can do because, look, they have hit a ceiling. And we've talked about this with Netflix and the streaming wars. Like, you've only got so many people that are willing to pay so much per month for, like, freaking 19 different streaming services. And yes, there are. There's I, like I'm 19 telling or 20. you, the worst thing in a long-term way, most of these companies are going to suffer, Disney and them. It was best, they they were better off, all these companies was better off, all of them was better off just staying on Netflix payroll to put their stuff on, pay, on Netflix. It was just better off. The money was, the money was coming, right? They had the share, but then the money was coming, right? People was going to watch their shit. It was all in one place. That was the point of Netflix for majority of people who didn't want cable no more because the cable was supposed to stop the, the point of going to Netflix was to avoid the commercials, avoid the, um, I have to remember to Tebow something or record your favorite show. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or anything close to that. Right. It, there was a season. If, if there was a show, the whole season sat right there on the day one. Right. If all these movie, if all these companies just went back to Netflix, things will be much easier for everyone. Everyone can be just on one streaming service. They'll watch your Disney's. They'll watch your HBO's. They'll watch your Warner Brothers stuff. Well, that HBO and Warner Brothers. They'll watch your CW shit. They, I think that's under the same brother too. They'll watch your, uh, your. If they had sports, ESPN. I, if Netflix went down sports, it would have been the Hulu as well. Um, you know, it just it is what it is, right? It is what it is. But because every other company had to be greedy just to prove they could, now they're suffering major losses at this point. So what what they should do is just go back to Netflix, but they won't do it because well, we're too prideful in ourselves to admit that we're wrong. So they'll they'll never do it. They'll die on that hill before they even do anything close to that, right? Um, it was better off because remember the pay for Netflix back then was like what five dollars a month. I uh, I think at first it started at like three ninety nine a month, technically four dollars. I think it was three ninety nine a month, and then it it raised a little bit to five dollars. I think directly just five dollars. And then that's where it started getting worse. That's right after that five dollar hitch went up a little bit. That's when all these streaming services started real or these companies started realizing we can do that too, right? And then once they figured that out, that's when all hell broke loose for Netflix, and they lost majority of their best show. Well, not best shows, but their back catalog of shows that people could just go and watch, like the Friends, the Seinfelds, the King and Queens, the Everyone Loves Raymond, Everyone Hates Chris. Uh, you know, all these different shows, uh, the, the Cartoon Network shows, the Disney shows, you know what I'm saying it had all the shows where you could just find what you wanted and that was it, right? Now it's like you have to go to several different streaming services just to get the shows you wanted in hopes that they have it. Because if you want to watch, like, say, let me use an example. If you want to watch, like, um... Vampire Diaries on Netflix, you only get, I think, seasons three through, like, I think, six. You don't get seasons one, two, and three, I think. I don't know. No, no. It'll be three seasons four to six. Like, you only get two seasons, but they're off from four to six. You don't have one, two, three, four, and five. You only get, like, two seasons. 
because they have the license to those seasons. But the other services have the license to probably one and two. Another one has like three, four, and five. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's just so frustrating to the point like, what is the point? Because after a while, you start realizing this, this tends to pile up real fast. And ultimately, now you're just... You're just paying for cable with extra steps at this point. It, you're better off being back on cable. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's usually one flat fee. You don't have to pay for if you're getting commercial or not. The commercial's already baked into the shows that you're paying for. Now you're just paying for the channels at this point. Right? Because most people are not paying for the channels on these streaming servers. You're paying for the shows that you want at this point. With commercials, if you're paying in a low-budget situation now what what this made for most people is the haves and have nots at this point that's what what these streaming services these su these subscription based uh companies or methods have made these uh have and have nots because you can't pay for so if if you only can make like you you enough to pay for like four dollars a month you're gonna get a bunch of commercials up the wazoo to the point it's going to annoy you if you pay for the highest thing you may not get commercials or you may get one commercial. I've been seeing this thing where premium now is not even no commercials. It's either you get a commercial or there's no commercials. You get a commercial. And that's weird. That's strange. Why am I paying premium for? I'm going to get a commercial. Ain't that the point of the premium, you know, package? No, it's like other things that they try to jip you in to to stay like it's it, it's 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 sad it's it's frustrating and it's annoying you know what i'm saying so i understand where neon is coming from with this it's just like it's it, it you guys were the majority of them corn. was better off hey there did i miss anything crazy oh no we're just talking about the streaming services um i don't think so not anything that i can think of um but yeah so ultimately i think to save the to to for the streaming wars, I think they should just give up. Give up on trying to compete with Netflix. Streaming services out there are probably more than that, but of the ones that 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 matter, and people are like, yeah. I can't afford this. It costs more than cable. It costs yes. more than direct TV. I just said it. See, having to combine things, they still can't compete with Netflix. So, I mean, they're trying to do whatever they can do to take from other streaming platforms to see what they can, you know, pick and choose, cherry pick the things they want to, tr to try, throw something against the wall, as Pelts put it, to see what sticks. But Verizon, they went back to the tried and true well here where they've done it before. We need a lot of subscribers. We're going to offer bundles. Yep. Um, Verizon will pay us for it so we can count it as paid. Because mm -hmm. Verizon will use it to leverage, deal, leverage you know, plans and, and uh, bundles for themselves, yep. as well as give Disney what they want. Disney has a promise they made to shareholders for their streaming services. Now, I don't think they're just saying Disney Plus now. Um, and numbers. And that's coming and that's coming due in a, in a few months. Yep. So let's give it to them for six months free. As soon as they sign up, people are going to sign up for six months, and they're going to count it throughout the end of the year as a subscriber. Well, it's not like anybody's going to lose their job over this, right? If they don't hit those numbers, yeah, I know, right? because it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, guys. This is this is uh, seems very desperate. There's definitely some panic, and I don't I don't see how, unless they start fudging the numbers, that they can look profitable by the end of the year when they've spent as much as they spend the content. And we know that people are actually quitting Disney Plus because there's not enough new content there. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to take these people that sign up for this, and then they're going to put those numbers into their charter spectrum numbers and all those other numbers that they keep getting bundles out there for, which yeah. I told you they weren't going to lose on that, nope. contrary to what people said. And they're going to leverage that for advertising dollars, and they're going to use that money to pump in. People are lowering blood sugar day after day by following a simple 10-second ritual before bed to it to say that's profitable yeah so that's what they're trying to do they're trying to get more subscribers so they can upcharge advertisers shove more ads in I'm, you're gonna probably see more so they can say at the end oh look we hit our profitability numbers and that's probably what they're going to do which i've been telling you that they're doing this so let's talk about moving some numbers around uh, oh yes yes let's talk about the white paper yeah let's talk about star wars so this is the article it's out on forbes and they basically take lucasfilm to task take uh disney to task for its acquisition and uh, you know we showed you this before 
you know, yeah, this, we this talked about here. this before. I read the fine print. And, and it, it is it's the really fine print. It's nebulous and weird. And what they're saying is that, yeah, they might have made back three times in revenue of what they spent for Lucasfilm, but that's not factoring the costs of the making the new stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like, I mean, they did this again, just to trick the pixie duster investors into thinking, well, look, they handled star Wars. Great. The article actually spends a lot of time talking about how decimated star Wars is that it's not in a good place right now that a lot of, you know, the expense that Disney has put into star Wars, it hasn't yielded results. They talk about the merchandise sales being way down. Um, they talk. Well, yeah, and it's, it's true though about the not having results. I mean, like the toys is I think do well, and I think Disney, if they were pushing the corner, they'd start. They would go down to the fact that well, this percentage of sales of tickets, you know, at Disneyland yeah. and at Hollywood Studios is for Star Wars. We'll count that money and everything else. Um, but it's not doing as well as what they're trying to spin it, so which we brought up before when we covered the white paper. Hollywood accounting. They're they're going to take. Which we said then it was Hollywood yeah, accounting, which we said then too. So it's, it's like basically Hollywood accounting. Like you can you can massage the numbers, and Disney is very very good at this. This is why the SEC was getting involved, you know, with the whistleblower. But but you can either make things look as good or as bad as possible. If if you don't want to pay taxes you make things look dire. Like, oh my God, guys, we can't even keep the lights well, on. Well, that would be interesting. I would love to see if they have a different story on the taxes than they do on this. Uh, yeah. That would, be, that would be really interesting. We're never going to see that, but that would be an interesting look. Yeah, because if, if you say, hey, we made you know, $4 billion in profits, the IRS is like, oh boy, oh Hollywood boy. Accounting. You know, it's like, oh no, no, we lost money. We we definitely lost. But I mean, look, they've spent but not on here. The white people, we made money. Yeah, <laughs> the, to 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 keep the board in place. Keep the board in place. But like, yeah, they're saying that the the merchandise sales, you got to factor that into it. But you have to factor into all the the massive duds. And I think it's great because they actually show definitively that Solo lost money, and that's one thing that's been you know up for debate. Everybody's like, oh, Solo did fine. It did just fine. You know, it made. Uh, you know, somebody thinks that if you spend $150 million on a movie and it makes $151 million at the box office, that's not a lot that you made a million dollars profit. I'm you like, didn't. dumbass. I, I have yeah. to take a moment no, to, no, you didn't. To, to, I love Caroline Reed's returns. No, of the you did Returns of the Jedi. I, I, I pre let, let, let me hear what you just said. I, I have yeah. to you know, somebody thinks that if you spend $150 million on a movie, and okay, $150. A hundred and fifty mil, and it makes a hundred and fifty one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a win, bro. That's not a win. If you made a hundred, he's right. A hundred fifty mil. If you, if you made a hundred, if you spent a hundred fifty million on your movie and it only made a hundred fifty one million, you made one million dollars profit. That is not a win. That is a major loss. You're supposed to get at least five to ten times what, back what you made, what you spent. It's it's like okay, it's like if I remember right, the dude who made the was it the witch the witch Blair series? I think it was a group of them, but the dude who made the witch Blair series, or yeah, they the the found footage uh, genre. They I think they're the ones who started that, and then it became the supernatural. Uh, I don't know if it's the same people or maybe they just copied them. I don't, I'm not really sure. But the point is, is that with the Weir Blair Witch uh, series, the dude had a camera, right? Just a basic camcorder, right? I think if I remember right. And just basic equipment. I think it cost him $10,000. I think the movie cost him $10,000 when he made it. 10,000. The movie made, I think, $50 million. He got a he got 100 times back what he even even got from that movie. That's a profit and some change. I think it made $50 million. Wait, let me look that up. Hold on. I'll I'll even prove it to you. So I think I remember that from that, inter that interview. I hit the thing. Let me see. Um. Uh, let me see if I can do this from here. Maybe I can show it. Take me to Google. Uh, 
How much... How much... Oh. No, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Why? No, we're not doing this. How much money did the Blair Witch first movie? Oh, I was. Oh, that was more than I said. I said 50 million. It was 250 million the first movie made. Despite having a short filming budget of thirty-five to sixty, only thirty-five to sixty thousand dollars on the Blair Witch Project, it was thirty-five to sixty. Let's just round it Darth up. Darth That's a lot of money. Honestly, that was a good movie for its time. Yeah, it was. And the fact that the movie was between thirty-five to sixty, let's just say it was around fifty thousand. I'll say fifty thousand dollars. They made $2,500 million off that. That is a major win. So when anyone says here, or you hear that they spent, say, a hundred, if, if, if Disney made a hundred million and the movie only made, uh, if they spent a hundred million on a, on a movie and the movie made 110 million, they only made 10 million profit. That is not a win. You're supposed to get five times as bad, or at least three to five times more than you actually made from your spending budget. Because remember, out of that ten million, you have to pay back all the people that worked on it. You gotta pay back all the the marketing fees. You have to pay back all the other fees if it goes international as well there's a bunch of fees in that that you a lot of people don't take account for most normies who don't know this so like if it didn't make it for this to be a profit you have to make at least more so if if they made a hundred million if they spent a hundred million and they made 200 million they made a hundred million profit they actually just they just they just made just enough to pay back all their people and have some some change back, but they didn't have a lot to the point that it's like five hundred, like four hundred million to uh four like four hundred million, five hundred million, or at least a, close to a, a a billion. You know what I'm saying? So like, let's just use the Mario movie. How how much money did it did it it take to make the Mario movie. It was a hundred million dollars that it took, according to two sources. It says according to two sources, it took at least a hundred million dollars to make the Mario movie, and it came back with a one point three four a one point three billion dollar profit and it scored another 173 million at the international box office CGI worldwide worldwide it made 1 billion dollars pushing its economy to 3 million it carries to the I think a perfect example of this is the five nine how much how much how much money did it take to make the five Five Nights at Freddy's movie? It was only two million. I mean, twenty million. My bad. It took twenty million to make the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Roughly twenty million, right? And box office wise, it says here that the Five Nights movie has now cleared more than twenty million. It it made two hundred million, or at least two hundred fifty million, in the box office. So it made back their money. It was twenty million. 
to make it, and it took, and they made two hundred fifty million. So that's a that was a profit. That was a win. But a lot of young people don't know how this works. They they think oh that's a lot of money. They'll make another one. No, it's not. It's not a lot of money. Sadly. Or is it the box office that you made a million dollars profit? I'm like dumbass. I, I yeah. have to take a moment to to to. I love Caroline Reed's Returns of the Jedi. Returns of the Jedi. I, I appreciate that a lot. Actually, I have to give her credit for that one. That one's pretty funny. But it shows that yeah. So or that was I guess box office mojo. That was that. her source for the chart. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I yeah. give I give box office mojo credit for the calling it Returns of the Jedi because that's hilarious. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, the Solo lost ninety million dollars when you factored in, but wasn't Darth the most Boricorn. expensive movie. Now, Rise of Skywalker. So saying you made ten million back is like a child holding up a piece of macaroni art, like it belongs in the Smithsonian. Correct. Depending on what your budget was, it really depends on your budget. If if your your budget should never be, you shouldn't make the two things you should never do is make less than your your spending but your spending budget, or you just make just over just a little over your spending budget you should make three the i think four four to five times more than what you made than what you spent so you have a you have a profit enough to pay your workers pay everyone pay the marketing fees pay the 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 all that digital more everything the advertisements and everything if you did do any of that and if i remember right i don't even think the blair witch the first movie even had advertising I don't think so. I think it was one of just those movies people just stumbled upon out of just pure luck, I think. I don't think it had a bunch of, like, um, uh, uh, I don't think it had anything close to that at all. So that one makes it kind of funny. You got to realize, too, they probably used a lot of the, the props and the startup costs and stuff like that, too. And we saw that with, with Solo and with Rogue One, like a lot of the same aliens and stuff. They mm -hmm. would use them because they're like, oh, yeah, we got all these. Yeah. So it's like, why are they using all these new Disney aliens that they came up with in the four? Again. It's not safe. I can't let you go. Force Awakens and all these movies. I'm like, yeah, because they got the costumes laying around. You know, they I still just... don't understand how Disney made more profit than they're spending on Last Jedi because that thing was a this dog shit. I it didn't make as much as the Force Awakens. But you know what? Here's the thing about Solo too. I want to point out the Last Jedi. Okay, it fell off a cliff after the first couple weeks. People boycotted Solo because they were mad about the Last Jedi. Yes. So you're seeing that, and they're not what they're not telling you in this chart is that a lot of the the losses on Solo, besides the fact people were like, "What is this?" It has to do with the fact that people were boycotting it after the Last Jedi. Yeah. And then you see the, the massive losses basically on the ride Rise of Skywalker compared to what they spent because at that point they ticked everyone off and nobody came. Yeah, I, to this day, I still have not watched that movie. No, nope, I have not either. I, I've seen parts of it on YouTube and I'm like, God, this is like a parody of Star Wars. Like, this is really cringy. I have no desire. And what kind of blew my mind about that too was like The Force Awakens they made such a big deal about how they're going to use all practical effects. And then the scenes I've seen in The Rise of Skywalker were like super CGI heavy. And it looked very, very fakey. Like in some ways, it looked, f you know, more fake than the prequels. That's saying something. But they that talk about they something. talk about how they kind of, uh, you know, used UK tax credits. They've and been. They did it for the Marvels too. We've talked about that a few times. Yeah, they've been doing that. So it's like, I mean, look, they're from. It's true from a certain point That's of view. That's it. I think that you, <laughs> given all the data, people can make this. You could argue it was it made it made its money back. But but with a different set of data, you could definitely show that it they're still in the hole. It's like you're never given a complete kind of picture of it. Yeah, and they're bringing up about Willow and Indiana Jones. That, that's part of Lucas' film too. Like Nobody talks they, about they, that. They don't account for that. No. When they're talking about the Star Wars, they bought Lucas' film, and no one and they're not mentioning the fact about how much money they lost and how they had to cancel Willow and they pretty much ruined the brand because of their stupidity for Disney Plus. Yeah, that's the thing. They are not mentioning that they just bought Star Wars. just Star Wars but that was only part of what they bought well even the Avengers like they're basically you know but limited... they're doing Marvel they're saying Marvel Marvel but... Studios Avengers but they're, oh, yeah, they're focused on Avengers Discord. only because Avengers yeah. campus okay. now this is uh so this is really already... now this is um Disney's you know own things they're or whatever, only but... using those ones because those are the ones they're using in the park they're using park heavy yeah, everything's That's why Avengers. They, they focused on that. Uh, everything is Lucasfilm, and then it's like, okay, it's all Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah, they're not saying, hey, look, uh, Indiana Jones bombed. Oh, hey, look, Willow bombed so bad that we had to pull it off of, of Disney Plus. No, because they're focused on. They bought Lucasfilm, but they're saying Star Wars. They bought Marvel, but they're saying Avengers. 
you know all like of these that. all Pixar, these shows they're just mentioning toy story yeah because that's toy story lands in the park right that's right because part because they're park related that's why yeah so they want to show the brand synergy and all that but like it's it's not good like again it's hollywood accounting they needed to razzle dazzle the investors to make them think that they knew what the hell they were doing but any idiot can look at star wars in particular and look at lucasfilm and be like they dropped the ball harder on this one than they did anything else like they just have not gotten this right since the start plus they bring up too about the theater like the totals are that but you have to remember the theaters take a big cut of it too and they don't mention that like it made 1.7 billion dollars yes how much did you actually make because the theaters took their cut and i well I, I'm, I'm sure if you look at information and data depending if they count theme parks depending if they count merchandise and green milk and blue milk sales and you know yeah. all that i'm sure if you account for all that you might be able to, to to look like they maybe made their money back with tax credits and everything else but it doesn't mean that they're actually making money. It doesn't mean that they legitimately did make their money back per se. It's just that they're just going to massage the data to make it appear that way. Yeah, I, I could totally see. I, I could totally see Disney being like, okay, let's take the uh, price of admission to Hollywood Studios. And and every person went to Hollywood Studios, okay, like, you know, 15, 20% of that ticket is going to Star Wars or Lucasfilm stuff because, you know, they did Indiana Jones and they did Rise of the Resistance and just getting in the gate. And they kind of do that with Harry Potter. How much of the park is is, is Star Wars now? It's probably like, what a, a third of it because you have the you have Star Tours. Yeah, there's a little bit of Muppets, and then you go into Galaxy Edge, which goes around the whole backside, wraps around to the other side. It's probably like a quarter to a third of the park. I am surprised. I thought they were actually going to connect Star Tours to Galaxy's Edge. It would have been much better. I don't just, know what they were thinking. Just bulldoze the Muppets completely. Or you just know? make something Star Wars there too, and make it wrap around. But they didn't. They could have made mean, that. They could have made it. Was it was weird. Like you know, oh my God, turned into Canto Bite or something like Disney's magical Star Wars gambling adventure. Well, they have they, they put the Muppets and everything. They just could make it Muppet Star Wars, and then they could have gone the <laughs> Star Wars. And then just hey, they own Family thing. Guy now. Um. But do family you know, guys do family they're guys like, they're going like family guy banners and futurama take your picture with futurama set oh my over god in Disney Springs right now it's this is like an this is literally that episode of the simpsons where they go to the the disney theme park and it's just like it's ridiculous well speaking of marvel we'll talk about this real quick yeah we have to go somewhere um also marvel had a 15 person layoff just yeah. yesterday now it's both in burbank at marvel studios and marvel entertainment in new york they're saying the ones at burbank were junior employees in production development at marvel studios and it's because they're reassessing or redirect reducing it's because bob Iger said they were canceling a bunch of crap that wasn't going to work yep so there's that. And over at the comic end in, in New York, they said after they got rid of Perlmutter, they were like getting rid of redundancies or something and they got rid of some people there. So they got rid of 15 people at Marvel. It wasn't a massive layoff, like some people were saying. Yeah. But it, it was, they're definitely cutting. You, well, I think they need to cut back to profitability. They, you know, need, they to need to make good movies. They need to make, I mean, comics and... they're better off with one or two good Marvel movies a year and one good Star Wars every three to five years than they are just, but the thing is, is that you have to feed that machine, right? When you're, you're a public company like Disney and you've put everything into these, these franchise, these IP, and you, you're, you clearly can't make anything new. You got to just keep going back to that well and you hope to God it doesn't run out of water. And you know, Disney, what they really should do is just go through and call a bunch of shows that aren't working. They should. If they have a bunch of shows that are just, just you know, you're, you're putting them out there for accolades and not because they're actually bringing it, you need to cut them. You yeah. need to cut these shows. You need to cut these comics. You need to cut these, you know, movies. And they sound like they're doing some, but they aren't doing enough, I don't think. And that same with Star Wars. So the, we'll see what happens moving forward. But if you're going to bank on more race shit, you're, you might as well just put put a hole, dig a hole and throw Star Wars in it at this point. Oh, because yeah. that's yeah. what's going to happen. So, Yep. So there we go, guys. More uh, Disney Disney accounting magic. That's, that's the most magical thing at Disney yeah, right now. Yeah, they're accounting. Yes. They're accounting. So we're going to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk <sighs> later. Bye. All right. So that was pretty much the whole Disney debacle problem. You know, Disney doing it. How it Disney's. So with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Like I said, I share, follow, and comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hmm.